Evers budget to include eight cent tax increase. Foxconn looks out of state to meet hiring needs. Child enticement reported in Racine. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Friday, March 1st, 2019. Governor Tony Evers answered the gas tax question on Thursday night. In his state budget address, the governor touched on a number of issues he had already previewed, including K-12 schools, schools funding, and Medicaid expansion. But he wrapped up with the transportation. Evers said that there will be fee increases and we do not have to raise the gas tax, tax but as I promised all along, we are sure as heck not going to raise the gas tax by a dollar. Evers said that the increase eight cents a gallon will be offset by eliminating the state's minimum markup on gasoline. He said that means motorists would actually pay less at the pump than they do now. Assembly Minority Leader Jordan Hintz notes roads funding has been kicked down the road for too long. What are the Republicans going to do? Because I'm hearing a lot of criticism, but I'm not hearing any answers. And we didn't hear any for the eight years. Evers said his proposals will raise over $600 million in new revenues and increase funding for local governments to repair the streets and roads. Much of the Democratic governor's budget agenda will be strongly opposed by Republicans who control both chambers of the legislature. We have some of the best new revenue numbers ever in Wisconsin, tweeted Assembly Majority Leader Jim Stanky. Governor Evers wants to increase spending by more than $1,000 for every man, woman, and child in the state, and that is unacceptable and unaffordable. Governor Evers' budget addresses also touch the issue such as school funding, Medicaid expansion, criminal justice reform, and rural broadband expansion. Evers spent most, almost 10 minutes of his address discussing new changes to school funding. These include things such as increasing funding for special education and helping to fund the UW system tuition freeze. Foxconn has a Wisconsin first hiring policy, but not everyone who will work at the tech company will come from the state. Foxconn's CP Tank Mordock told a business group in Green Bay yesterday that they are looking for and getting applicants from people across the country and around the world. Foxconn has promised to hire workers from Wisconsin, but Murdoch said there is no way that all of the talent that they need can be found in the state. It is never going to be easy to meet our hiring needs, Murdoch said to the Wisconsin Technology Council. The company has held 44 job recruiting events and 22 in Wisconsin. The rest were out of state. Foxconn had said that their new racing facility would be used to build liquid crystal displays but earlier this year, the Taiwan-based company suggested that the site could become a research and development facility with fewer but higher paying jobs. After a phone call from President Trump, Foxconn reiterated its commitment to the LCD project. Foxconn has also located its North American headquarters in Milwaukee and has committed to sites in Green Bay and Eau Claire. The company has also been in talks for an R&D partnership with UW-Madison. Foxconn's commitment is to hire 13,000 workers by 2023. If they fail to meet that target, they will not qualify for state tax incentives. And Foxconn failed to meet its hiring quota in 2018 and missed out on those benefits last year. Governor Tony Evers says he wants to provide immigrants who are in the state illegally with a driver's license. 
The governor says it would make sure that all drivers are trained, have properly registered vehicles, and can identify themselves in case of an accident and have insurance. State Senator Rob Cowles, a Green Bay Republican, said, I have reservations about that. He said any driver's license for those who are not in the state legally would have to be designed differently so it can't be used for identification like to vote. I'm willing to talk about it, but I know there is a concern about that. It is unclear if Republicans who have majorities in both houses of legislature will support the proposal. They will begin reviewing the budget in a joint financial committee next week, and the process could take a month or two. Cowell said that the driver's license proposal is one of the numerous policy items that don't belong in the state's two-year budget, but should instead be introduced as legislation. Police in Racine are warning their parents after their third report of an attempt child enticement in one week. The latest report came Wednesday from a young girl who was on her way to school. The children were taken, no children were taken or harmed, and police say would-be victims have all given similar descriptions of the suspect. A black man in his 20s or 30s, thin build with a full beard. He was driving an older black four-door sedan with rust. Police are asking people to call them at 262-635-7756 if they see anything suspicious. Governor Tony Evers delivers his state budget address Thursday night to a joint session of the legislature. Assembly Speaker Robin Vaz is a Republican and will sit directly behind the Democratic governor as he lays out his two-year spending plan. I'm a little pessimistic, Voss said in a telephone interview on Wednesday. He has been signaling big tax increases and an expansion of welfare, Voss said. While his expectations are low, he hopes that there are some areas of the agreement between the Democratic governor and the GOP-controlled legislature. Evers has already signaled that he favors an expansion of Badger Care by accepting federal funding and decriminalization of marijuana for recreational use. Those ideas are unpopular with Republicans, and Evers will also propose legalizing medical marijuana and additional funding for roads, which may pick up GOP support. The legislature's Budget Area Committee and its Republican majority will spend months modifying Evers' proposal, and it will then send it back to Evers, who can use his line item veto on the final product. And finally, a judge has ruled new evidence can be taken into account in the case of Stephen Avery. Wisconsin's Court of Appeals is ordering a lower court to take the new details into account, including the testing of bone fragments that were found in a gravel pit and given to the family of freelance photographer Teresa Halbach. According to the attorney Kathleen Zellner, the state acted in bad faith by returning the bones over to the family without telling the defense. She said it could have allowed the family to destroy what would have been considered evidence while the appeals process was still playing out. Avery and his nephew, Brendan Dassey, are both serving life sentences, accused of killing Helbach in 1995, and both are appealing. According to Tuesday's ruling, all claims in the case to date should be considered in a single appeal, which will be stayed until all claims are addressed. Zellner announced the ruling on Twitter by simply stating, we won. The case has been the subject of global attention ever since the December of 2015 when filmmakers presented a 10-part documentary called Making a Murderer on Netflix. A follow-up, Making a Murderer Part 2, was released in 2018. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Monday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.
Thank you.